I'm Dr. Frances Levine, President and CEO of Missouri Historical Society. We're pleased to have you here tonight as we pay tribute to Josephine Baker, who on this very day is being honored with an induction into the Pantheon in Paris. Thank you especially. I, I bet she never imagined such a thing, or maybe she did. Miss Baker was not only a riveting performer, but she dedicated her life to service in so many ways, from her time working in the French resistance in World War II, to her participation in the fight for civil rights and racial justice. Before I introduce you to tonight's speakers, um, it's a privilege for us to, um, to be a place to honor Josephine Baker. You know that she ultimately left St. Louis because of the discrimination that she experienced in the segregated city. She turned down a number of offers to return to St. Louis because she refused to perform for segregated audiences. And when she finally came back in 1952 to perform at Keele Auditorium, she seized that moment to deliver a speech to the people of St. Louis. She spoke of leaving St. Louis and the United States to find freedom of soul and spirit but that no matter how far she moved, she remained unable to set aside her concern for the suffering of black people in the United States. And she implored the audience to try and understand and love each other before it's too late. My name is Sarah Baker and I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff for Mayor Tashara Jones. I'm delighted to join you tonight as we recognize a St. Louis native, a world-renowned entertainer, a philanthropist, a World War II resistance leader, mother, and civil rights activist, and Josephine Baker. As the mayor noted in her remarks earlier today, we were ecstatic but not surprised to learn that Josephine Baker was going to be one of the, fir what, the first black woman to be awarded one of France's highest honors today in Paris. Josephine. <laughs> Josephine, a St. Louis native, exemplifies what makes our city so special. We are a city that fights for civil rights, and Josephine Baker is a proud part of that history. Her work and her bravery put St. Louis on the map in a powerful and profound way. We celebrate Josephine Baker for her role as an entertainer and her role as a resistance leader. Our city thanks and honors her. It is my honor on behalf of Mayor Jones and the city of St. Louis to declare today, November 30th, as Josephine Baker Day for the city of St. Louis. Thank you, Josephine, for your unflinching ability to speak truth to power and to fight for justice. And Dr. Levine, I would like to uh, give you this proclamation. Now on behalf of the city of St. Louis, proclaiming this day, Josephine Baker Day. Welcome, everybody. This is, as uh, Dr. Levine said, when I called, there was no other place. I was one, like one of those bad students who only apply for one college. And it was going to be here, and I didn't have a plan B. So I'm really glad they ended up saying yes. So many thanks are in order tonight. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it to a strict minimum. All right. So this is the Pantheon. Pantheon by night. As revolutions, kings, and emperor came and went from its inception, the Pantheon remained as a silent but attentive witness. Today, interment in the Pantheon crypt is solely by invitation of the French president. To the great men, the grateful country. To the great men. Hmm. Maybe this is the reason why there are 75 men and only six women. The six women being Josephine Baker today. <laughs> this is what it looks like when you come in, and this is a crypt. Now I'd like to talk to you about a few famous Pantheon residents. Of course, Voltaire, Jean-Jacques Rousseau in 1794, 
1829, Jacques Germain Soufflot, its architect. In 1885, Victor Hugo. In 1925, no, I'm sorry, in 1907, we have Pierre-Eugène Marcelin Berthelot. And the reason why he's interesting is because his wife, Sophie, is the first one, first woman to enter the Pantheon, because she was the wife of. <laughs> Emile Zola entered the Pantheon in 1908, 1967, Syntex. Second woman to enter the Pantheon, first one to enter the Pantheon on merit is Marie Curie, in 1995. Wow. Toussaint Louverture, hero of the Haiti's revolution, in 1998. Alexandre Dumas, in 2002. Aimé Césaire, in 2011. Third woman, Geneviève de Gaulle Antonios. She's a niece of the, of the famous general. The name might tell you something. She was interned in 2015. Fourth woman, Gerben Tillion, resistant in 2015. Simone Veil, politician, Holocaust survivor, Minister of Health, interned in 2018. And I couldn't resist. Antoine Veil. He entered the Pantheon because he's Mr. Simone Veil. <laughs> and today, Josephine Baker, resistant, entertainer, civil rights activist. A ceremony has never changed a society. But I believe that this kind of commemoration sends a powerful message on how to look at one's past. On November 30th, 1937, she became French. Today, the same day, November 30th, 2021, she enters in the Pantheon, 84 years later. I would like to share with you tonight a different perspective of my inspiration for her. She is the most avant-garde and committed woman of the 20th century, who has accomplished what no other woman had achieved before her, friends and family. You know, I have lived a long time and I have come a long way. And you must know now that what I did, I did originally for myself. Then later, as these things began happening to me, I knew they were happening to you. And I knew that you had no way to defend yourselves as I had. When I left St. Louis a long time ago, the conductor directed me to the last car and you all know what it means. But when I run away, yes, when I run away to another country, I didn't have to do that. I could go it, into any restaurant I wanted to, and I could drink water any place I wanted to. Because I was happy, I had some success. This exceptional human being fought racism, anti-Semitism. She fought for freedom, for France, for equality, but most of all for love and her children. That's a lot of battles. The images of her do not fully serve the remarkable, complex woman she was. Because she wasn't only an artist. At 19, she participates in the Harlem Renaissance Movement, also called the New Negro Movement, 
that was serving art, culture, and social action in the African American community, alongside Webb Dubois, Marcus Garvey, Billy Holiday, Duke Ellington, Cap Calloway, etc. And she exported it to Europe. She wasn't just an extraordinary dancer who disrupted classical styles of dancing. She wasn't just a review and opera singer who sang Offenbach music and made her first recording in French at 21. She wasn't just an actress, actually the first black actress to star in an international movie, playing a woman falling in love with a white man, when at the same time in America, the actress Hattie McDaniel was playing a maid in Gone with the Wind. But she was also a World War II spy. Pourquoi pas? And in order to do so, she had to leave France for four years, something she does completely voluntarily, that no other woman of her social standing chose to do. She gave the French resistance access to all of her resources by using her name and relations. Invited to the cocktail parties, given in the embassies, she was gathering information about upcoming Nazi meetings, troops positions, the intentions of Mussolini, about the policy in Japan, everything transcribed in encrypted language and invisible ink on her musical scores. She used her connections to secure Spanish Moroccan passports for Jews fleeing Nazis in Eastern Europe, stating that Eastern European Jews were Moroccan Jews, allowing many to escape to Latin America. And to hide her involvement in counter-espionage, she joins the air rescue pilot nurses. After the war, de Gaulle made her Chevalier of the French Legion of Honor. She was also awarded with a top military award called La Croix de Guerre for her role in resisting occupation under the Nazis and La Médaille de la Résistance. <laughs> So good evening to all. Many thanks uh, to have joined us tonight for this very special program dedicated so, to the most famous St. Louis born French citizen, Josephine Baker. Since a couple of days, French journalists pretend she wanted her name to be pronounced the French way, Josephine Baker. I don't know if it's true, but uh, I'd like my bad French accent tonight to be considered as a very diplomatic compromise between the French way and the St. Louis way of saying her name. I don't want to be too, too long because uh, the nicest presentations with uh, pictures, video clips, and the musical part of the evenings are over. So how not to conclude these remarks, which come at the end of my very first day in St. Louis, paraphrasing the most famous Josephine Baker song in French. J'ai deux amours, mon pays et Saint Louis. As of today, I have two loves, my country and St. Louis. Thank you for your attention.